everyone. Welcome to the latest installment of the CHL Top 10 Show. As always, my name is Scott Van Kunit, and this week I sit down with the QMJHL's leading point producer and the CHL's leading goal scorer. It's Antonin Barreau from the 10th rank Rwanda Huskies and Zach Funk from the 4th rank Prince George Cougars. Now in his fourth season in the queue and first with the Huskies, we're getting an opportunity to see what a healthy version of Antonin Vero can do for the first time since his rookie campaign. The former second overall pick in the queue has a 34-point lead over his closest teammate. We talk about the injury troubles that plagued him throughout his draft year, what he did to come back better than ever, Crosby highlights, reuniting with Sam Savoie, and how the coaching change in Rouen has positively impacted the team. Here's Antonin Vero. Really excited today to welcome my first guest. He's from the 10th ranked team in the CHL Top 10, riding a five-game win streak. He's the QMJHL's leading scorer from the Rouen Noranda Huskies. It's Antonin Vero. Antonin, how are you doing today? Good. Yourself? Uh, I'm pretty good. Uh, you know, the weather's been a little bit crazy here. You're about, uh, I think, about four and a half hours from from where I am. And yesterday, we started off the day at 10 degrees. And today we're sitting at about minus 15. What's it like in Rouen today? Yeah, it's pretty much shit. Uh, yesterday was seven when I woke up and at the end of the day it was minus 22. So it was pretty crazy yesterday. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, we're we're getting getting closer to that spring-like playoff time feeling, but uh, winter keeps rearing our ugly head. Yeah, I can't, I can't wait to get that vitamin D before games. <laughs> well, if if uh, if that's going to help you in your game, everybody better watch out because you're already leading the queue in scoring with 30 goals and 93 points, and that's 34 more points than your closest teammate, who's uh, Lashko. And in the month of February, you've got uh, 19 points in in 10 games. So you've like you're you're really heating up right now. You've only been held pointless 11 times this year. Is this all because we're finally seeing what a healthy, fully healthy Antonin Vero can do? Um, I cannot talk about this season, the past two seasons, because I haven't, you know, played a lot. But for me, this year was just uh, getting in fresh start with the Huskies, getting traded from the uh, Gatineau Olympic uh, this summer. And I feel like uh, every game since the beginning of the year, I'm just... Uh, getting better every, every game and I'm just trying to get better for the playoff too. So I guess it's going well right now, but I, st I still want to, you know, take the next step for the playoff. Well, how much has uh, it, the injuries aside, but how much has your role changed this year from what it was last year when you were healthy, where you were one of many guys on Gatineau to being like the go-to guy in Rouen? Yeah, I mean, you look at our lineup last year, uh, you look at our first power play, you know, uh, maybe I was expected at the start of the year, you know, to plan the first power play, but then you look at it and they're all like draft player, all signing the NHL, so you cannot, you know, complain about it. And, you you know, I had to accept my role after Christmas when I came back from my, you know, jaw injury and my wrist injury last year. I kind of accept my role and I, I thought I had good playoff. Uh, but for me, like you said, uh, having a huge role with the Huskies this year, uh, I think uh, that's why my season is going well. Well, like I said to you before we started recording, I, I read an article in La Press about about you and and your draft season and and how up and down that was. Um, so let's talk about that a little bit. You you played through a wrist injury for most of that season, right? Yeah, so it started just just before Christmas. So I thought uh, with the Christmas break, uh, maybe it would have get better. And then I came back, and it was still the same after two practice. So, but then right after I got a AC joint for three weeks. So I thought, you know, for three weeks maybe uh, it was gonna be better. Uh, but then it, it never never went out, and I finally finished a season. I had to, you know, get that get that cast for three months and then right after I got told uh the wrist was not even healing so I had to you know get the surgery and get another cast for three months so uh I thought the process was kind of long uh but I I thought I did a pretty good job with you know uh keep my mindset uh for you know the the game uh upcoming what what did you learn going through that process maybe learn about yourself or 
um, you know, learned that you would potentially do differently uh, in the future? Because obviously you don't want to miss games in your, in your draft year. And, and I understand where, where your mentality would be like, you don't want to take, you know, three months off to, to recover from an injury, but you know, maybe what did you learn through that process? Yeah. So I guess I always say uh, my 17th year was supposed to be one of my best, uh, but it happened to be the worst year of my life. Cause you know, uh, I think at the start of the year I was, you know, ranked first or second round and then, I kind of dropped, but I, I, still, I still thought I would have get drafted at the end. Uh, but yeah, at 17, I had my wrist injury. And the, the, the fact that I didn't know about it, you know, we, uh, I thought it was just the tendon. I didn't know it was the, the bone. So uh, that's why I kept playing on it. You know, if I, if I knew it was the bone, maybe I would have taken another, another pattern. But it happened that I just had to follow the plan right after the season. And for sure, it cost me a little bit for my draft year, uh, but it's not only the good. It's not only that reason that I did get draft. Like I still didn't have the year I wanted to, uh, but I think right now I'm just focusing on you know playing, uh, playing hockey and having fun to to play a game. When when you eventually came back last season and then you you got in, uh, I believe it was about twenty games, and then took that that puck to the face and had to miss another three weeks. Like what? What was the thought process then? Because the frustrations must have been mounting for you. Yeah, so I got lucky a little bit last year. Um, at the start of the year, I had Nado, uh, Olivier Nado. We we both had injuries at the start of the year. Uh, so then we trained together, we're on the ice together, and then I finally came back. And you know, when you miss three or four months of hockey, you you need five or five or ten games to get back in the rhythm, and then. Right when I was in my rhythm, you know, after 10 or 12 game, I got the puck in the face and I had to make miss another three months. So uh, another three weeks. Uh, so, yeah, it was kind of tough. Uh, but I think and Gatineau were pretty lucky. We had uh, Guy Desjardins as a skating coach. So I got lucky to skate with him every morning from 7 to 8.30. I was alone on the ice with him, um, with Olivier Nadeau too. So... I think uh, we had a pretty nice setup to Gatineau for workouts. So I got lucky to be a nice organization like them. Uh, but for sure, yes, I was m missing the game. Uh, but I'm pretty happy that I got to compete in the playoff last year. So, and, and you were able to, you know, take something bad. You take your lemons and you made, you made some lemonade in, in the sense that you were able to improve on your skating while you were dealing with, you know, your wrist injury and then and then your jaw injury. Yeah, you, you always hear about a lot of stories about, you know, just the, the bedard story about his wrist when he was young. Like when you're injured, you have to do something about it. You cannot only sit in your bed and play Fortnite every day. Like you have to do something about it. And then, uh, yes, for sure, the, the, the two or three first days, it's always tough because you want to play hockey. But then right after uh, I got back in the gym, got back on the ice and then uh, I had my cast for three months, but uh, I was still on the ice with it, uh, just skating, not even shooting. And I think that's why right now uh, my season is going well. It's uh, it's about all everything I did the, the the past two years, even though it didn't it didn't go my way on my seventeen, and I had the injuries and stuff. I feel like I did everything I I was uh, able to do, uh, and that's why right now you know uh, my skating is a big part of my game. On on the mental side of it, are you able to rebound from a bad outing? Obviously, you haven't had many slumps with only being held pointless 11 times this year. But are you able to to look past bad outings now because of your experiences, you know, uh, through your draft year, the injuries, getting passed over in the draft, that stuff? Does does a little slump seem really small now to you? Um, I'll knock on the wood, but, you know, in a, I want to I want to play hockey. I want to play hockey professional and uh every time you play hockey in the future i'll for sure get another uh injury like if it's in the pro it's gonna be in the pro but uh you have to know how to deal with it and for sure it was my first big injuries at 17 uh but yeah for sure i got to learn uh how to play with the little rules but also how to how to miss some game and you know work out and how to get back to uh game shape because it's it's not easy like it's not the first game that you you know how to know your uh all how, how to do your uh, everything you know how to do on the ice so and and for uh i believe 
I also read that you're a hockey junkie. Is that is that true? Like you you love watching and and doing all like you know following along on all things hockey. Uh yeah, I like to watch a couple games every night uh, on my MacBook on my TV. Um, I want to be after my career. I also want to be either a coach or GM or something. Uh, I'm passionate about the game. I like to watch games. I like to, you know, we're lucky now after our games, we we have sports logic, uh, the feedback about our game. So um, I think everything, everything that comes with hockey, I, I like to do. So when you're missing so much time, were you watching your team's games and and kind of like, were you help like, you know, talking to guys on the team and saying, hey, I see this or talking to the coaching staff last year and being like, hey, you know, maybe I like I see this guy doing that or or this and that. Or are you just watching more like NHL games or other other Q games and stuff? Well, I tend with doing both. Like I'm all always watching NHL games. But uh, last year at the start of the year, uh, we we kind of had a slump, too. Uh, so I was talking a lot with Louis Rebitai, our coach at Gatno, that, and even though I was not playing, I uh, was still looking at every game we had, every every guy, and uh, for sure, like guys like uh, uh, Arsenal, uh, Robert R. Uh, we had uh, Savoy, which uh, was in my team right now. For sure, I was talking to them, and uh, like it's always good to have feedback from upstairs, uh, from uh, up there. Uh, I was in the box and got no heating some popcorn. So uh, they, they were pretty happy that I had some feedback for them. Who are, who are some of the guys in the, in the NHL that you like to watch? At, you know, not necessarily guys that you play like, but, but guys that you just like to watch. Um, I've always been a uh, Ben Wagon in sport, even though I watch football. So I always watch the best players. So for, of course, right now it's Nathan McKinnon. I think he's right out. Uh, Corner McDavid, but uh, also there's player a little bit like me, uh, smaller, uh, Brennan Point, uh, Johnny Goudreau. Like I like to learn about every players, uh, but I think it's always good to look at players that look like you a little bit, and also uh, what the best can do. Uh, you look at Sidney Crosby, the way he's carrying himself. Uh, he's still one of the best at 35, 36 years old in the NHL right now. Uh, so I think when you look at the best player, that's how you, you you can improve your game. And and when you're watching these guys, are there specific things that you're looking for, or are you making notes of of things that they're trying and doing and and trying to implement those into your games? Yeah, of course. Uh, when you look at a guy like Austin Matthews, of course you're gonna look at like how you shoot the puck, uh, the way he's always gonna be able to shoot on a net, even though there's a stick. So. He- he's able to get his shot through. And then you look at McDavid, oh, he's able to uh, slow down the game, but also like sometimes you just slow down and then you get going. So yeah, of course you always look at players like that. And like like I said, I think that that's how you get better. And and I also like in that, in that same article, it, it talked about uh, you watching Crosby highlights before every game. So I just, I'm kind of curious how, how that started and, and why you decided to do that? Um, I think it was just Pee Wee Hockey, and then I was just watching some highlights before every game. And then uh, next thing you know, I watched the Crosby one, and I think I had a three or four four goal game. Uh, so I I just kept kept watching it every game, and then it it came back. It, it came to be my you know we we as a team uh, with our psychology coach uh, with the Huskies, we talk about the uh, alter ego. Uh, to turn your your switch on so i find like every time i watch the, this uh this crosby video in my bed uh, just before i leave for for the rink i turn on to you know go go play hockey now so it's the it's the same highlight video each time or or is it switched up just just always crosby well i think it's the same one it's just crosby doing some edge work and then shooting and then it's going like just it's not even like that much of a good clip. Well, it it's working for you right now, so uh, so keep it up. But uh, you guys are second in the Q's Western Conference right now. You've clinched the West Division, and you've only had three regulation losses at home this season. So, what makes Glencore Arena such a a tough spot to play for visitors? Um, I think I can also talk about you know I, I used to play 
uh, in this arena against them. Uh, just uh, the way uh, facilities are not that great. Uh, you have to, you know, uh, get through stairs and then you jump on the ice. So it's always tough to be aware there. Uh, but also uh, just the fact that the rink is, is a lot smaller than other rinks in the league. Um, I think even in the playoff, I, I remember watching the 2019 playoff uh, with Harvey Pinot, Bibo, and all these players. Uh, I think in the playoff, if the fan uh, can, if we can have a sold out crowd, I think it's going to be even more. Uh, if, I think the other team's going to be even more afraid to play against us because I think we have good, uh, a lot of big guys in our team. So if we can start a hit and uh, get the crowd into it, uh, it can make some damage. Yeah, some of those smaller, older barns, uh, the 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 hometown crowd can really give you an advantage, especially in the playoffs, because they seem like they're just kind of on top of you, right? Yeah, I mean, I remember in Gatineau, yes, we had a new rink and stuff, but still, like, we can just fit five 5,000 fans last year, and we had 15 sold on the row, and it was crazy, so. we're You guys are three weeks in now with your, your new head coach, Steve Hartley, and you're six and one since he took over. So, first of all, uh, how shocked were you guys as a team when when you heard the news? Um, I think we were in school and we we just saw a tweet and then right after we saw the the tweet uh, from uh, the Huskies and yes, I guess we were a lot sh a lot shocked about the news, but also um, we had a meeting with a GM and he you know uh, he told us that when they take that decision, it's not only the coach but it's also a a reset for the team. Uh, it means the players are we're not playing uh, that great uh, recently. Uh, so just the first game with Steve, we saw what happens eleven nothing. So I thought uh, as a team we had a reset, and then uh, since Steve is there, I think uh, the mindset is just playing a lot quicker. Uh, I think he thought our games uh, by watching the games before he, he came. Um, he was saying that uh, we're not playing fast enough so i think in the recent game our, our goal is just to uh, move puck forward and uh, with the skill we have up, up front uh, if we move the puck and we go in their zone and we don't defend uh, we're gonna be a, a lot better and i think that that's what we're doing recently does it also provide a bit of a like you said it's a a, a reset for the players but and, and the team but is it also a bit of a, a wake-up call for all the players as well yeah yeah uh reset wake up call um, I think it was everything. Uh, I don't think we're going in the right direction uh, in the past few weeks uh, before Steve. So uh, when Steve came, uh, it was kind of a second season for us. Yes, we had a good record and stuff. Uh, but if you want to know, if you want to win the playoff, you have to know how to win. And I find like every time we had a lead, we're losing the lead. And uh, every game was playing in the third period but in all key like a lot of games is winning the second period like you know when you're winning 4-2 getting that fifth goal uh knowing how to play with the lead like everything was not going our way so i find like it was kind of a wake-up call and uh i think we're you know we're, we're kind of awake right now and and one of the areas that i'm sure sure you guys are aware of um that could use some improving would be in in penalty minutes right now and you guys are you guys have the second most in the queue. So how aware of that are you guys? And and what types of things can you do to kind of lower the penalty minutes so once you get into the playoffs, you're not giving teams too many power play opportunities? Yeah, um, I think it's tough because we got a lot of players that are big, that love hits. And also, like, we don't want to stop hitting because that's one of our strengths, you know, as a team. Uh, it's just knowing when to hit, how to hit. Uh, I'm not a big guy, so I'm not the, the one that, you know, know how to hit every time or something. Uh, but yeah, it, it killed us a lot of games. Just, I can remember one game in Shawinigan, we're winning three nothing and we got a five minute PK and then they scored four goals and we lost the game. Like it's game like that, that in the playoff, uh, you cannot afford to lose. So uh, of course, uh, we're not doing a good job with the penalty minutes, but I find like her PK recently is uh, a lot better. So if we can even have less PK, uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be good. And and you know you say uh, the physical side of the game and playing with a with an edge, and obviously uh, you need that in the playoffs. And a guy that plays like that 
is your current and former teammate, Sam Savoie. I just uh, curious, how much influence did you have in, in bringing Sam over from Gatineau? Yeah, I mean, when I heard about the trade, I was still I was still talking to him since the since his injuries uh, with Chicago at the start of the year, and we were hoping for maybe a trade to come here. And then uh, when I when he called me and he told me it was you know trade here, I was so happy. And I think um, he's a player that you don't want to play against. So I was happy that he come here because he's my good buddy. But I also didn't want to play against him. Uh, I think it's the same for every player in the league. Like he, you know, he's he's not that that big. Like he's not that tall, but he's still two hundred pounds. Like, um, he's a guy that you know he's a game changer. Uh, for a team, I think we we needed that. Like we 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 have good we have a tall guy, big guys, but uh, the fact that every time he's on the ice, uh, the other team is care. Uh, it's good, and I think he's also a good leader for us. Uh, we lost our captain Dylan Gill. Uh, so I think bringing him um, as another leader, uh, bring a lot of energy in the room. What makes guys that play like like Sam so valuable in the playoffs, especially? Um, I think it's because there's not a lot of guys like that. Like you look in our league, and I don't, I don't even know if I can name you and other players like it. And you look in the NHL, and you know you think about players. Uh, Brad Marchand, you you look maybe Andrew Shaw used to play for Chicago too. Um, you know it's players that won cup, uh, won Stanley Cup, and they were a big part of it. So I think, um, if we you know uh find a way to win a cup, he's gonna be a big part. Well, you guys you guys grew up together in Gatineau after being you know uh after the Olympics picked uh, Tristan Luno yourself. Uh, Savoie and Noah Warren first, second, fourth, and eighth respectively in the in the 2020 draft. And now your current teammate Leighton Crothers, he was the third pick in that draft. So now you guys have the the second, third, and fourth from that the 2020 draft all together. But uh, how cool is it just you know again being reunited with him, a guy that you've essentially grown up with. Yeah, like you said, it's, it's cool to we, we kind of talk a lot about it. Like uh, we have me the you know the second, third, and fifth, but uh, it's so cool to have him back. Um, you know, I saw the clip that he got injured, and then I had goosebumps. And I I remember I had a bad game, and I, I didn't even care about my bad game because I saw my my old buddies getting injured. Uh, so, um, you know, I saw him grow up at sixteen, seventeen, and finally got drafted, and I. You know, I thought he could have even go lower, like he was a third, uh, third round pick, but he could even go lower. Like he's so good as a hockey player. Uh, but of course, we, you know, you look at Warren, who is now in, you know, Victoriaville, and maybe you know, like I don't know if he's gonna get back or not. But you know, he, it could be weird to play them, and we have two on our side and two on their side. Well, the the plan in Rouen this year, and and you guys start off the year as the the preseason number one ranked team in the CHL. But the plan's always to just to get to the playoffs, and then once you're there, you go on a run. So you guys are in now. You don't know who you're going to play yet, obviously. Um, but how how do you guys start to prepare for the playoffs, or when do you start to prepare for the postseason? Um, I think it was a process for us, even. Even since the beginning of the year, we didn't start the way we wanted. Uh, we were ranked first, and then we lost both game against Valdor. And you know, and Juan Valdor is, and Juan is a big, uh, they're big rivals. So uh, losing both game was another wake up call for us. And then since Steve came, uh, like I said, um, we're trying to you know play quicker and no no other win. Uh, I think that's a little bit the process that we want to have uh, until the playoff. Uh, all the practice we don't have them that, that much practice left like we you know we have 11 games in March so it means uh, 10 or 15 practice maximum uh, so every practice we have to compete uh, every practice have to count so um, they're all going to be important until the the rest of the season because we I think the the coach the coaches they, they still want us to rest so we we're going to have rest days but uh, like I said I think playing quick uh, still Still manage how to win games, and also you know you 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 talk about our penalty minutes. Uh, if it, if it can go down just a little bit, um, 
and you know have less PK, it can be it can be a good thing for the playoff. How long did it take? You know, you and well now now Savoy, um to start to get along with the the rest of the roster that you guys knocked out of the playoffs last year, or or get along with uh, Rousseau and Langlois, who knocked you guys out of the playoffs last year. Yeah, um, it's kind of funny because I I always chirp the guys that we swept them, and then there is Langer and Rousseau that comes after, and they're like, "Bro, you we swept you guys," you know. Uh, but uh, it was kind of easy for me getting here the um, for the training camp. Uh, I had Loshko, I had Rousseau, I had uh, Langer, you know, that, that I know of, and also they were new players. Uh, so I thought uh, it was kind of easy, and I think we have a, you know, a good group this year. Uh, we're, we're not lucky, but in a sense, we're lucky to spend a lot of time in the bus together. Uh, we travel a lot, so uh, I think that's what made uh, Wena Ada so, uh, so nice to play, is that you're so close from every guy's. Uh, so I think that's one another thing that's good for the playoffs. I think we have a good brotherhood brotherhood in the in the room. I've I've heard that from from guys all across the CHL that uh, you know the the long bus rides it, it brings everybody close together and and you having you know gone in a on in the playoffs uh, the last three years and and going in the deep run last year. Um, obviously you're you're more aware of how important it is to be tight with everybody but how much how much more does it help to have you know your playoff experience Savoie's playoff experience and then Rousseau and Langlois like all that to draw on and and help you know in the room with the other players that might not have as much experience yeah of course we have you know Langer and Ruse that won last year and so they they always tell us, you know, I think you play almost 100 games. If we, if you win the Mem Cup, you you play almost 100 games. So, uh, you have to, you know, uh, get some rest when you can. You have to eat well and stuff. Uh, so we have, you know, those two that know how to win. But we also have me and Savoy who uh, happened to lose last year. So we know, um, you know, in the playoff, we we lost two games in the, in the overtime. So all the little details are so important. Uh, like I said. Uh, and I think it started from the preparation and practice, uh, just eating well in the playoff. I think, you know, a lot of teams, we have food right after the games because it's so important to get that protein right away. Uh, so I think it's all the little details that maybe didn't go our way last year. And it happened to, you know, we, we got swept, but the, all the games were so tight. Uh, you know, small turnovers can change a series, small, you know, just a shot can change a series. So... Uh, I think it's good to have a uh, bold, bold piece of uh, the puzzle. Well, you guys have, like you said, just 11 games left in the regular season, and you're home for the next five games, which we already talked about how, how good you guys have been at home this year. But two of those are coming up this weekend against Shakutami, who are probably one of the hottest teams in the queue right now, riding a 10-game winning streak. And uh, their goalie, Remy De La Fontaine, um, has looked unflappable in his in he's nine and oh in his last nine starts so when you know that you're coming up against a guy a goalie that's red hot like that how do you game plan for somebody like that um i think like you said you know they're they're on a 10 game eater um which is kind of good for us because like i said we're in a preparation for playoff right now so we want to have those challenge and i think we had one last week uh with drummondville uh, we we I thought I thought our game was pretty pretty good and then uh, this weekend like you said uh, we're playing a pretty good team and uh, I think we faced a lot of good goalies this year and we're kind of lucky in practice we have uh, Rousseau uh, who is kind of good too so uh, we we have to you know uh, know that he's playing good but I think it's going to be important to go in his face all game and I think that's another thing that Steve is you know uh, putting some efficacy on it's uh, you know to go in front of the net and get get those rebound get those uh, second chance so uh, I think if we can do that this weekend good thing will happen how often do you talk to uh, Russo about uh, about other goalies and and you know if you're having trouble scoring against the goalie or something like that do you ever approach him and say hey what sh what should we be looking for here yeah, I think uh, since I'm in the league, we were, we're pretty lucky to have either clips from a goalie we're facing or just uh, 
uh, we have some stuff on the board that say let's you shoot high or you go low. Uh, so I always chat with Ruth, with uh, Bordage, our backup goalie. Uh, we have a pretty good uh, uh, goalie coach here in the in the way that playing the show. Uh, so I always chat with them, and I think it's the same thing for every guy. So it's always good to you know uh, where should should you shoot by the percentage. All right, finish this for me. For the for the Husky to have a successful playoff run, we'll have to. Uh, I'd say play the Husky game. And 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 wrap it up one more time. What is the Huskies game? Uh, I think it's like I said, brotherhood, uh, compete, uh, passion, and then do the job. Awesome, Antonin. Thank you very much for this. Good luck the rest of the way. Thank you. Zach Funk had never scored a WHL hat-trick before the first game of this year. The Cougars' overager now has eight hat-tricks on the season to go along with the single-season franchise records for goals and power play goals. We'll find out what Zach worked on this offseason, the goals he set for himself and has already crushed, why this Cougars team is better than last year's team, the competitiveness at practice, and how that has led to a number of players having career seasons. Here's Zach Funk. My second guest today is the first and only CHL player to have hit 50 goals so far this season. He plays on the fourth ranked team in the CHL top 10. It's Prince George Cougar, Zach Funk. Zach, how are you doing today? I'm great. What's, uh, I was talking to, to Antonin Vero in Rouen, Noranda, uh, which is, you know, in the northern part of Quebec, and, and it's cold there today. How is it out in Prince George today? Uh, it's not bad today, but a couple nights ago it was uh, minus 37, so that wasn't fun. <laughs> so, so you guys are still getting the winter weather out there? Yeah, it's starting to come more, yeah. Well, you guys, uh, you know, it's it's pretty hot with the Cougars right now. You guys are first in the West. You, you clinched your second BC Division title in franchise history, you know, 8-1-1 one, and one in February. How is this year's team better or maybe better equipped to go on a championship caliber run than last year's team was? Um, I think we got a lot of different pieces this year. I think, uh, you know, there's young guys that are coming in that are, uh, they've taken a step, uh, they progressed this year, like and our leadership group, you know, we've, uh, we've helped them, I think a lot. And yeah, like I said before, we got a lot of different pieces that are coming together. Are you guys even more balanced than you were? Like last year's team was good and, and it was a pretty balanced lineup. But like this year, you guys have six guys that have over 20 goals and eight guys that are over a point a game. Last year, you had five guys that ended up over 20 goals and five that were over a point a game. So a little more balance, a little more depth this year, too. Yeah, I would say that. I mean, I think a lot of guys uh, after that little little playoff run last year, I think a lot of guys went home in the summer and worked pretty hard. and. You know, uh, a lot of guys are finding their groove right now. Well, for you yourself, you're now sitting at 56 goals, 99 points. And not only did you score your first hat trick in your WHL career this year in the first game of the season, which was part of a five point night, uh, which is awesome. But you've added seven more hat tricks already this year. So, like, I just got to know what what was your off season training like? Um, I mean. I kind of did a lot of things differently, you know, worked on the shot a lot, worked on the hands and skating and all that. And, um, I mean, I don't know how they're going in like that right now, but it's obviously really nice. <laughs> now, when you say you were working on your shot, like what, what types of things were you doing to, you know, was it, is it your release? Is it a little bit of strength? Is it everything just reps? Yeah, I would say like everything like that. Yeah. I would say that. Yeah. And and do you watch videos of you know of yourself shooting of other guys you know like NHL players or or you know even even Bedard like, like how they release the puck or or shoot the puck just to you know try to take things from all the the, the really good goal scorers and and try to implement them in your game? Yeah, yeah, I would say that. Yeah, like watching Bedard last year and guys in the NHL uh, like. Matthews and you know uh, Pasternak how they get the puck off really quick and you know you want to get that puck off really quick uh, like those guys was there a point 
in your training this summer, or maybe it was, you know, at the, at the start of camp that, that you kind of thought, Hey, you know, maybe I'm about to break out or what, are you just as surprised as, as everybody? Uh, well, I, I always tell them like my family, when they ask me that, you know, I, in the summer, I was really kind of manifesting. I would say, you know, I told myself, you know, that I want to have a big year. That's kind of how it's gone. I, I mean, I wouldn't have predicted this myself, you know, uh, scoring, scoring this much, but obviously it's a really nice feeling to have. Well, what kind of goals did you, did you set for yourself? Cause like you said, I don't think anybody could have imagined, you know, like set it, setting franchise records and we'll get to that in a second, but um, you know, obviously probably try to set career highs, always looking for, for a contract. What were the, like, what were the goals that you set for yourself? Personal goals, not team goals. Cause we know team goals to win a championship, go to the Memorial cup, win that, et cetera. But, but what were your personal goals? Uh, like, uh, points wise, I wanted to hit 70 this year and, uh, goal wise, I wanted to get 30. So yeah, that's kind of, those were my goals, but <laughs> yeah. Well, you broke, first you broke the, the single season franchise record for power play goals, which was held by your old roommate, Chase Wheatcroft. Um, and, and I've heard you say that, that you've talked to him a lot and he's kind of helped you, but how did he help you in your game? What kind of things did he say to you to, to kind of help you come along? Um, I think nothing really too specific. I think he just said for me to enjoy my last year in, uh, in the league and you know, have fun. I think that's what it came down to, uh, just trying to enjoy myself out here. And, you know, it's, uh, you always play better when you're having fun. So that was a big part of it. Did he reach out to you? I know the, the team put out a message from him, but did he, did he reach out to you at all bef while you're getting close to the record to say, Hey, l slow it down a little bit. Like you don't need to break it so quickly. Yeah, he did. Yeah. He texted me and I was like, uh, I got to do it. <laughs> <laughs> and then last week you said the, Last weekend, you set the single season franchise record for goals for, for the Cougars and by scoring a hat trick, which is obviously fitting in the season that you're having. But you got to do it in Kelowna, which is only about, I believe, an hour from your hometown. Yeah, yeah, that was pretty special. You know, I had a bunch of family there. and um, My brothers were there, my parents, you know, like uh, grandma and grandpa. And yeah, it was obviously uh, very special to do it there uh, in front of all, all those people. Yeah, how nice how nice is it to be able to have them there, share that moment with you? Because I'm sure they don't get to see a lot of your games. Yeah, like that was my first time uh, having my grandparents this year uh, in town. And I want to, uh, you know, uh, score some goals for them. So, yeah, it was obviously uh, a special night for me and uh, all my family. And and just like, have you have you been able to take? You know, I know, I know there's still 10 games left in, in the season and then playoffs, but have you been able to take like a half step back and just kind of like, you know, be proud of what you've accomplished already? Um, yeah, that's a good question. I mean, sometimes I do, but then, uh, you know, reality kick, kicks in and I just want more, you know, I just, uh, I mean, I'm not really satisfied with uh, what I've done, you know, it's good for maybe the night that I do it and then it kind of just wears down and I'm uh, fresh again. So, yeah. How do you, how do you keep that mentality? Cause I'm sure there's a lot of people that would just be satisfied with, you know, like you said, you, your goals were 30 goals and 70 points. And, and I'm sure there are people that would be satisfied once they hit those and kind of take their foot off the gas. But like you said, you just keep wanting more and more. So how do you keep that mentality? Uh, I think, uh, like wanting to win, I think, you know, we want a championship here in PG and it's big for uh, all of us in the room and the coaches and, you know, the city. So I think uh, I want to do what I can to help this team. And, you know, I got to score goals for the team. You know, that's kind of the role I've been put into and which is uh, what I want to do for this team and help them. So was that kind of like the conversation with, with coach jam, Mark lamb at the start of the season, like, Hey, I, I want you to be a goal scorer this year. Or did he ask you to shoot more? Cause you are obviously shooting way more, or is that some, a combination of him asking you to do it? And then you just shooting more because the puck's going in. So the confidence is going up, which leads you to shoot more and more. Yeah. I would say, you know, he wants me to shoot a lot. And uh, I mean, he's, he's uh, always trusted my ability, you know, uh, he kind of lets me do my thing out there and, 
uh, yeah, it's kind of a role I've just kind of um, stepped into. You know, I didn't really have that role last year, obviously, but yeah, it's kind of been a work in progress and it just keeps going. And yeah, I think uh, I'm happy with it. And obviously, you're going to get keyed on more and more as the season progresses when everybody sees that you're putting up more and more goals. So do you have to find, keep finding different ways to score and, and, and getting out, you know, getting open because you're getting covered more often now? Yeah, I would say that, you know, the power play, uh, it's been tougher, you know, they're kind of keying in on me there, but yeah, I think going to the net, I think that's a big one, you know, pucks always going to the net. So, uh, if I want to score, I got to go there. So that's kind of what I figured out. Uh, you know, I've been in slumps this year and, uh, that's cause I'm not going to the net. And I think, uh, as soon as I figured that out, it's been, uh, better for, uh, like goal scorers and like that kind of thing. And then your line mate, Tarek Parasak, who's just been having an incredible, you know, rookie campaign. Um, obviously we see how impressive he's been from the outside, but as a guy who plays on his line, how impressive has he been to you? You know, guys don't normally do that or, you know, do what he's been doing in their first year in the, in the WHL. Yeah, I mean, a lot of times when I'm playing with him, I forget that he's 17. Like, he's uh, making plays like a 20-year-old out there. And, yeah, it's it's been impressive to watch. You know, I, I remember when I was 17, I could barely get the puck out of my own end. And he's uh, he's dancing around and stuff like that. So, it's I'm honestly super happy for him, and it's been awesome this year. Obviously, it's his, his draft year, and, and he keeps climbing the rankings with the play that he keeps doing because he's, you know, he, he got off to a great start, but he's been able to sustain the level – uh, just like the rest of the team has. But what makes him such a dangerous player? Uh, his deception. You know, you never know what way he's going with the puck. Uh, yeah, he's he's just, yeah, so deceptive with the puck. He's got great hands. You know, he can shoot the puck. He can score goals. He can do a lot of that stuff. He's not afraid to go to the net uh, with the puck. And, yeah, I would just say, yeah, all those things combined. And then Riley Height is another guy that's taken his game to to another level this season. Um, how much is there a friendly rivalry with, you know, n not only height who you guys are, you know, back and forth with points leaders on the team and, and in the WHL, but with, with the entire team, because it seems like almost everybody's having a career year this year. Yeah. I mean, there's always that like friendly, uh, rivalry, like you said, you know, uh, you always want to be like the leader, you know, like me and Heider go back and forth. Uh, some games, you know, we'll get more points than the other guy and then some games, the other guy will. And obviously it's awesome, you know, when you have that, that problem and it's uh, a lot of guys have, uh, are doing that right now. And that's uh, awesome to have. What are practices like for you guys? They got to be pretty intense. Oh uh, yeah. I mean, yeah, we battle and we want to score goals, you know, like, everybody wants to score goals out there. So when you don't, you get kind of, you get kind of frustrated when another guy's scoring and stuff like that. It's obviously, uh, it's a good, like a good rivalry out there in practice as well. Well, and I can't imagine either of your goalies, you know, in Canucks prospect Ty Young or, or Ravensburger, who's, you know, another rookie who's just burst onto the scene for you guys. I can't imagine that those guys uh, are making it easy on you in practice either. No, they're not. That's, yeah, <laughs> they want to stop everything, you know, and they're so good at it. So it's like, it's obviously, we want to score too. So it's, uh, it's just, uh, it's a good dynamic, you know, everybody wants to, to win. So, yeah, I mean, they make it frustrating on us and sometimes we make it frustrating on them and yeah, everybody wants to uh, do their bidding. So. Well, we kind of expected Ty Young to, to be a good goalie this year, obviously as a, as an NHL prospect. Um, but Ravensburger, you know, coming coming onto the scene, why has he been able to have so much success for you guys? You know, he's third in the WHL in save percentage and goals against. Like again, another guy that shouldn't be able to do what he's doing as a rookie. Yeah, I think uh, I think he's learned a lot from uh, younger and in uh, that perspective. And I think uh, you know when I saw him in camp, he was unbelievable. I didn't even know who he was, like where he's from, and he's just, he's so good at what he does and he just takes it, he takes it very seriously, which is awesome. And he's uh, developing at an unreal rate right now. And uh, it's awesome to see. How, how close are you guys as a group? Because again, like I was talking with, 
with Anton and Vero, they're on the bus a lot because they're, you know, they're a Northern team and they have to ride the buses more. Obviously you guys have to ride the bus a lot too. How much does that help you guys get closer as a, as a group and how much is that going to benefit you when you get into the playoffs? Yeah, I think it's actually a good thing, you know, when you have that much time with uh, the boys and we always have fun on the bus. So it's uh, always very enjoyable. You know, we get to know each other more like at the start of the year, it's a big help uh, getting to know your teammates and whatnot. And, yeah, we just have a great time on the road. What's uh? What do you guys do on the bus the most? Are, are there movies? Are you guys playing games? What are you guys doing? Uh, a little bit of cards, uh, stuff like that. You know, movies. Uh, just chat. You know, uh, there's a lot of that going on, and you know, uh, just all that stuff. Yeah. Who's the Who's the card ringer? Oh, there's a lot of guys actually. There's probably, I'd probably say Desane maybe. Yeah. I think he is. Yeah. And and we kind of touched on uh, Coach GM, Mark Mark Lamb. Uh, how much have you, you know, enjoyed playing for him since coming over uh, last year in the trade? Oh, I enjoy it so much. You know, uh, all three of them. I think uh, it was a, a great thing that happened to me. You know, uh, the pleasure of uh, getting coached by Mark. You know, he's got a ton of knowledge and uh, stuff like that. Same with the other two. And it's just been great. You know, he's a great coach. And, yeah, I just love playing for him. Have you ever have you ever talked to him about his playing career and, and kind of, you know, how he had to, to work hard to get everything that he got, like he earned everything he got, you know, and, and playing with those Oilers teams and winning a Stanley Cup with them. Even, you know, similar to you in his final year in the WHL, he broke out in a big way with 59 goals and 136 points. Do you guys ever talk about that kind of stuff? Uh, we haven't really talked about it, you know, like kind of, um, it kind of shows through his coaching, like what he's, uh, his knowledge of the game and stuff like that. He's been on winning teams, obviously Stanley cups and like that. And, and it's just amazing. You know, uh, we all know like, uh, his playing career and how special it was. And, yeah. It, it shows through his coaching. And, and I heard him. Uh, recently say he's not, you know, not really happy with the amount of power play opportunities you guys are giving up. So how, you know, as we get closer and closer to the playoffs and then into the playoffs, how do you guys toe that line of playing with an edge but not getting penalized for it? Uh, yeah, I think we've struggled with that a little bit. Um, but, yeah, you always got to find that that uh, that line that can't be crossed. And, you know, uh, it's going to be different with every ref, but obviously we don't want to take uh, more than three a game. And that's uh, – I don't know what the answer is, but we just got to play uh, just, yeah, uh, in the lines and in the rules. and Yeah, just play hard uh, in between the whistles, I think. Now, I don't know how much you know or if you know anything, but um, what's uh, what's the status on, on Cohen Zemer? How close is he to uh, potentially making a return for you guys? Uh, that's a tough question. I don't really know. I think he's in L.A. right now, and, I think he's coming back with the team, I think, pretty soon. Uh, but he's got to skate and stuff like that. So uh, we'll see. And what kind of an impact will he make, you know, if it's if he's back for the first round of the playoffs or or if it's a second round? What kind, what, what are, what's he going to bring to the to the team once you guys do get him back? Oh, I think uh, a little bit of everything. I think high powered offense, you know, he'll fight, he'll hit. I think that's a guy you need in the playoffs. So, yeah, he's pretty special player and I think uh we'd be lucky to get him and I was uh I was looking at some of your old rosters uh earlier today and I and I saw that uh one of your old former minor hockey teammates uh who was lighting up the AHL finally got uh, his NHL call up and now has two goals and three points in three games how cool is it for you to see a guy like Logan Stankoven having the success that he's having this year Oh, it's, it's awesome. You know, I texted him uh, when he made his debut there and, you know, he worked so hard. Like he is such a hard worker, you know, he's, he's a dog on a bone when he's out there and it's just awesome to see uh, him get there. And I always knew it was going to happen from a young age. Like uh, he's just, he's got it. And uh, yeah, it's very impressive that he's uh, lighting up the A and gets his angel debut and he's scoring goals like he always does. So that's awesome. How many, uh, like, you always hear people talk about, you know, either junior teammates or minor hockey teammates. Yeah, I'm still friends with guys that I grew up playing with. How often do you keep in touch with guys 
you know, other than Stan Coven um, that you grew up playing with? Uh, all the time, you know, like we're all pretty close, you know, we train the summer together, like all the guys I grew up with and stuff like that. So yeah, I see them a lot and uh, we always keep touch during the season, you know, get pictures and stuff like that. We're playing uh, against each other or something like that. So yeah. Um, yeah. All the time. It's awesome. Uh, 10 games left. Like I said earlier, you've got uh, five straight at home, starting with a pair against Spokane this weekend which could be a first round matchup preview, um, you know, and, and obviously Spokane still fighting for a playoff spot, but how much do you guys talk about not taking your foot off of the gas and the, on the play and, and staying hungry for these final 10 games? Yeah, we, we've talked about it a lot. You know, uh, we need these wins. We need these points because uh, Portland and Everett are coming and uh, we just want to clean sweep these last 10, hopefully. And, you know, put ourselves in a good spot. You know, we want to be number one, so we uh, set ourselves up for the whole playoffs. And and what's it kind of – what's the vibe coming around the city now? Like, I, you know, obviously you guys have been doing well all season long, but now records are falling, banners are being captured. Like, are the fans starting to get amped up at, now that, you know, you're getting close to the playoffs? Yeah, yeah, they are. You know, those fa these fans here, they're, they're unbelievable. You know, playoffs will be – electric uh yeah they're just so passionate you know they care about uh the cougars yeah we're uh we're lucky to have them all right finish finish this for me for the cougars to have a successful playoff run you'll have to oh it's compete yeah i think that's yeah <laughs> Awesome. Zach, thank you very much for this. Uh, good luck in the final 10 and hopefully a, a long, deep playoff run for you guys. Thank you very much. That's it for today. Thanks for checking in to another episode of the CHL Top 10 Show. Leave a comment and let us know who you'd like to hear from. And as always, make sure you like and subscribe as we continue to chat with some of the biggest and brightest names across the Canadian Hockey League.